Back on Facebook. Back in the saddle. My light's a little too bright here. There we go. <laughs> Hello, Kentucky. Hello, Internet land, where we many of us spend our days uh, surfing the world from our living rooms. I am Lillian Brislin. I'm giving us some time to warm up here as we get ready for our high season live cooking demo here in partnership with Kentucky Farm Share Coalition. Chef T is getting things ready in the kitchen. Um, I've got Katie Harvey here from Kentucky Farm Share Coalition and Oak Organic Association of Kentucky getting ready to talk with us. And um, it's kind of a rainy day here in Lexington. I don't know where you are in Kentucky or around the world, but um, it's a good day. We've got some warming, but not too warm. Still great for a hot day. Summer foods coming up here. So letting people find some time. Uh, the Food Connection is a local food system center at the University of Kentucky. If you are, this is your first time joining one of our live casts, welcome. Um, I hope maybe you're cooking along at home. Maybe you're just here for the recipes and the, and the fellowship. So that's welcome too. Maybe you're catching a slide. Maybe you're catching us at a later date, but it doesn't matter because you still can't eat the food at the end. <laughs> so it's all right. Um, yeah. As I said, we're here with Kentucky Farm Share Coalition. This is our way of partnering with all the great local food systems providers in the state. Our farmers have been inundated. Almost everyone that I know of is totally sold out, if not oversold, on their CSA shares, community supported agriculture. And um, many people are coming to local food systems maybe for the first time and they're working with fresh seasonal products, new things, um, familiar things. And maybe you're like me and your crisper drawer is filling up because you didn't feel like cooking last week a little bit. So we've got some great recipes to help you feel like you're making the most of your share because we want you to feel enthusiastic, comfortable, confident, moving into the next season. So that's our plan for tonight. We're going to learn a little bit. We're going to watch Tanya cook. And we're going to dream of sharing meals together. So let's bring in Katie Harvey, the CSA program coordinator for Oak. Welcome. Hi, Lillian. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here with you uh, virtually and uh, Chef Tanya in the kitchen. And um, excited for this virtual demo and ratatouille grain salads. It sounds delicious. Um, I, yeah, so I work with the Organic Association of Kentucky. We administer a wellness program where we work with a coalition of certified organic farms in the state and we bring in community supported agriculture shares to the workplace. Um, and employees that participate, they can typically use a CSA voucher that um, they can use towards that total cost that reduces that financial barrier to sign up for a CSA share. It's offered as a wellness incentive um, and employees love that convenience of getting to pick it up at, in the workplace, uh, close to home at a community pickup site and enjoy 20 to 22 weeks of local organic veggies. Um, and like you said, lots of there's been lots of interest this year. A lot of all of our um, CSA farms have been sold out for the season and there's lots of veggies that people are receiving each week and we want to give them um, some resources and tips on how to use them so chef tanya always i always learn something new and i'm excited to be here with you all um, and if you're interested in connecting with us for a workplace csa program in 2021 um, you can contact us on our website kwayfarmshare.org or you can contact me directly i can um, just katie at oak oak-ky.org so um, I'm ready for some delicious cooking. Let me put, I'm going to, I am a little rusty. I've been letting our students uh, kind of take over the shop on hosting these live streams. Um, so I'm a little rusty, but this is the Farm Share website. If you haven't seen it. <laughs> Great place to look and check out. We're gonna stick around through, after we get done cooking, we're gonna show some great uh, resources here. We've got a resource up at the Food Connection. Katie's put some awesome graphics and there's great resources on the website. We'll talk about those briefly in any upcoming events. So be sure to check out Farm Share Coalition. And Katie, I have one question before you, before you before we get to the cooking. It's a two part question. What's the thing that you gobble up as soon as it comes home in your CSA share and it doesn't make it very long? And what's the thing that you're always trying to find ways to make effective use of? That is such a great question. <laughs> uh, I have two things that don't get into the fridge, which is uh, fresh uh, like snap peas. I just like eat those right away. Um, carrots don't typically last very long. 
just stuff that I can easily. And I'm always looking for more ways um, to use like summer squash and <laughs> always, always a uh, one that I'm like, okay, what else? So this is perfect. I mean, ratatouille is a perfect, perfect one. Great way to use them up. Thanks, Kitty. And if you have things that you're looking for, if you can share with us, those of us who are watching along live, share with us in the chat. What are you looking for ways to have more recipes to use of what's coming in your shares? Because we're building this resource hubs and recipes and demonstration videos we'll show you later. So let us know. We'd love to know what you're looking for help with. So Kitty, we'll say goodbye to you briefly. We'll see you a little bit later. And here comes Chef T. Good evening. I had to remind myself to say good evening. I'm so used to good morning. Good morning. We've been doing these Monday live casts. We just had our last Monday live demo with Chris with Daughter Southern. He made that pitmaster hash, which is like a veggie hash with some pulled pork over the top or an egg or his own undoing oh, that he that's... made and smoked and then an egg on top of that. It looked incredible. Ah. Uh, I was hurting with hunger when I that, <laughs> and I had to eat like a prepackaged soup mix or something because we had <laughs> no. it was painful. Go I back to our archives <laughs> on the Food Connection page. You can find it. Um, check out Daughter Southern. He's got some great Pitmaster. They've got a great series of um, things coming up. I'm just excited about it. Tanya, let's talk about tonight. Yes. What are we doing and how are you inspired? Well, we are there, right? We are in August the height of the growing season, everybody's favorite time. This is when all your favorites are coming in tonight. You know, I haven't, I haven't had the chance to make a stick of ratatouille this year. <laughs> but normally I make it and make it and make it. And in fact, we did a booth at, a, at the um, health department health fair last year with Katie and with Oak. And uh, that's what we did that time. So I, it's a big thing for me to do this time of year. One, it's one of my favorite dishes of all time. Uh, yes, if you've seen the movie Ratatouille, you, need, you know that it's a peasant dish, as Janine Garofalo <laughs> likes to say. It is a peasant dish. However, um, I think the reason these dishes be proliferate uh, is because they're simple to make one, bing, uh, they're delicious, bing, they use up a lot of vegetables, bing. So uh, if you're looking for ways to get rid of everybody's back porch is probably getting sneaky little piles of summer squash zucchini and tomatoes right now. My mom was talking about how she could not give some of hers away because all her neighbors had either grown or been given some. It's like the opposite of room in the end. You know, you go, nope, I've got them. Nope, I've got some, but um, this is a great dish. You can make a huge amount. You can adjust it and make it the way you want. You can make it loose and saucy. You can make it really tight and put it on other things. Um, but basically, ratatouille transforms these vegetables. So you get that recipe tonight, but then you get the grain recipe all together. So we've got three different kinds of grains already fixed. And we'll talk about fixing the different kinds and what you need to do. And then we're gonna take that some sauteed red Russian kale, mm. make our own real quick um, Italian dressing because we're blending all these different flavors together and I thought Italian would pull them together best. I've got a few beans cooked over here and then I'll talk about other optional add-ins. I've got some uh, along the side waiting backstage to be brought out at the final moment. So um, let's get cooking. All right, let's get at it. Just to let you know, we will be watching the chat. If you've got questions, put them in there. I will ask Absolutely. Tina live. I love popping in. She, she's used to me interrupting her. So ask us your questions. No question too silly. Um, my first question, what kind of beans, Tanya, you can't leave me hanging? Well, I was going to get cannellinis, right? Because that's that big, it's mm. like a white kidney bean. It's, it's got a great skin and it's super creamy on the inside. Well, I scribbled my notes so that I couldn't read it when I got to the grocery store. So I forgot my cannellini, but we had some pintos here. So I threw those on when I got here, lots of onion, lots of bay, you know, and it cooks down. Yeah. And so I've got a few brown beans to go in for some protein. Excited. All right, let's get to it. All right. So first things first here, we're gonna start with our aromatics. If you're lucky enough to get some garlic in your box, uh, just pop off several cloves. I've got three really big ones right here. So I'm just going to do these three and you just take your knife. Uh, as you can see, lay your garlic flat, put your knife on blade pointing away and just whack it. 
with the back of your hand and that will pop that papery bit off so you can get the cloves out. That's a quick and easy trick for that. Some people rub their cloves, some people shake them in a jar. That takes a little too long for me. And if you get the right amount of pressure, you're not gonna squish your cloves if that is a concern. But more often than not, I end up smashing my, or missing my cloves again. So that's fine if I smash it. Now I'm gonna use a claw with my non-cutting hand. We call that the Wildcat Claw. And on my knife, I'm gonna put thumb, forefinger on the metal and pinch on the spine of that blade. And my three fingers are wrapped around the handle of the knife. I'm gonna use that teeny tiny claw for the teeny tiny garlic. And I'm just gonna slice it back to the woody part of the garlic. And I'm gonna to toss those woody parts into my discard bowl. Once I've got them sliced up like that, all I have to do is kind of keep them in a pile, do that move like you see on every Food Network show ever, put your hand flat on the back of your knife, put the tip down, don't lift the tip up and lift and lower your knife, rock it back and forth like it's on a fulcrum and just chop away. What you're wanting to do is get your garlic to about one eighth of an inch or smaller square or cube and uh, you want it all about the same size. You might want to clean your knife a couple times, reposition your garlic and then just keep chopping away. Now with this stew, this can be a fairly rough chop. That's true for just about everything you put in ratatouille. Now is this like the beautiful stuff that it's all sliced in the same size and laid out like in the movie. No, that is a very haute cuisine version of a very rustic grandmotherly uh, peasant dish. So uh, we're gonna make it old school style. I've got this onion here. It's from a local farmer and hopefully you've got onions too since we are under a recall. Be careful about any onions you've purchased in a store lately. You may want to just get rid of them out of safety's sake but I bought this one at the farmer's market this morning. So it is a safe one. We're going to split it in half. So that makes it easy to peel. I'm even taking off the first layer because it's all papery, kind of leathery there. We don't want that in our food. We want to take off anything that we wouldn't want to eat. And this way we have two very stable sides that aren't going to roll around on us. Now I'm going to show you how to dice this and to do that, We've got to pull the onion. I'm gonna use the bigger piece because that might be easier to see. I'm gonna pull it close to me on the edge of the cutting board so my knife can stay parallel to the cutting board and not tip up because of the handle. I'm slicing almost, but not all the way through. I'm stopping, I'm leaving just about half an inch at the bottom, lifting up once again, making one more slice. So I've got these three slices that are still attached. Now I'm gonna turn it toward me take the end tip of my knife and press straight down, still leaving this end completely attached so that I now have sticks that are attached on the bottom, which is actually the root end of the onion. And I'm gonna cut across that to get a nice medium dice. Now, like I said, this is a stew. You're gonna let it go and go and go, hopefully. Uh, you can still eat it pretty fresh. It just develops a lot of flavor over time. And uh, the vegetables do, like I said, they turn into something magical. And even if you don't like zucchini or eggplant or something like that, give this a whirl just because it, it's not like tasting a bite of zucchini and a bite of eggplant. It becomes its own special dish. If you're still a little afraid of that, then just chop everything up a little bit smaller than what I'm gonna show you tonight. Okay, so I've already got a little bit of onion going. I'm gonna scoop that into my bowl. Now the eggplant. I've got two here, beautiful. One globe, uh, this is what you'll see in the Mediterranean. Uh, this one is striped. You, If you go to the farmer's markets or if you're getting some in your share, then you may see little small white ones. That's where they get the name from. <laughs> I always wondered when I saw this, how did they get eggplant from that? But if you see the little small white ones, you'll understand how they did. All you have to do on this is we want fairly bite-sized chunks on this, but um, some people like their ratatouille really chunky and that is fine as well. That way you get a little bit more of the distinct flavors. I'm gonna make about three quarter inch slices somewhere between half and an inch slice. I'm leaving the peel on because this is being stewed. 
and we don't want the eggplant to completely fall apart. And I'm going to stack these up, get rid of any trash, and I'm going to stack them on their thickest end because that's more stable. And we're just going to make slices. If you are not comfortable stacking, then all you have to do is do this to each individual slice and then cut across those slices. And you have a large chop, fairly rough. I'm gonna get that one top piece that's by itself. And you still get that beautiful striped pattern that's on the skin. You'll see eggplants in all lengths and shapes. A lot of the Asian varieties are long and thin. They look more like a, a purple zucchini. We're gonna put this in here. Now, if you do this ahead and you can, you'll want to store your eggplant in uh, some salted cold water or it will turn brown on you. But since we're gonna use this fairly quickly, uh, I'm not gonna worry about that step. Uh, and if you, some people say you should salt eggplant to get the bitterness out, but it's really only the old eggplants that have been, have been allowed to, to grow a long time and the skins get really tough, kind of just like any vegetable. If it's been on the vine or the plant very long, it's going to get bitter, uh, and especially if it's been really hot. So um, I have not encountered that many eggplants with a harsh, bitter flavor. And sometimes I want a wee bit of bitter in the background. That's why we use some green peppers and things like that. So that is fine for this dish. May not use all the eggplants. Look, now my eyes are telling me that might be a bit too much. All right, I have this beautiful purple pepper and a little yellow one. These are both sweet, neither hot. I've got some reds and some oranges cut up already here. Easiest way to cut, um, break down a bell pepper. I'm trying not to stand in the logo. Break down a bell pepper is to cut the stem end off and then the lower end, and you can keep this part. Then I'm gonna make a vertical slit so that I can open it up. And then I just take my knife and very carefully cutting away from myself cut out all the ribs while I roll. And that way I can get the whole seed pod and all the ribs out at the same time. Then I can turn the pepper over and smash it just a bit and you get sort of a rectangular flat shape and that makes it very easy to cut into strips. If your pepper is really big and you feel uncomfortable wielding that huge section, cut it in half and then we'll cut those strips across. And I'm gonna show you how to break down the little, kind of what I call a lunchbox pepper, uh, because that's only slightly different. Just gonna chop that up. That'll have more of the flavor of the green. Now, unfortunately, it will also turn green once we start cooking it. That is the problem with some of those beautiful purple veg, like asparagus and peppers and green beans that are have a purple hue that you typically turn green once you start cooking them. So I'm gonna take the stem end off the lunchbox and the end off of, you can just chop up that tip. Same thing though, put it on the, the largest end, split it open and then circle around and grab that pith and seed pod out. Those seed pods are much smaller in these little lunchbox peppers. And so this will be super quick because we'll only have a few sticks out of this tiny pepper. If you use those lunchbox peppers and find yourself going, oh my gosh, am I gonna use them all before uh, I, they go bad, then just throw them into something. Chop them up, throw them into something. You don't have to use them just as a snack by themselves. All right, I've got a couple of different, all kinds of different summer squashes. I don't know what you're gonna see. You may have patty pan, you may have these little round ones. This is a zephyr all kinds of zucchini coming out our ears. And all you have to do is just break these down into similar size slices. Now I've got some already done here. I've done some half moons because that was that one was about the same size as this. So I'm gonna have this just like I did that one so I can show you. I'm gonna, this would be the straightest way, not the easiest to hold. And then you put it down on those flat sides and cut through and you get the half moons or the mezzaluna on the larger ones if they're really big zucchini as they can get sometimes about this time of year then quarter them just make sure everything is around the same size in regard to volume 
and then this little one, I'm just gonna do the same thing. You notice pattern, take the stem off, take the bottom off. I'm gonna quarter, actually I might just half moon that one. And this one. And I think it's gonna be plenty of squash. We're gonna leave that little zephyr for something else. Now on the tomatoes, I've done a lot of those and let me tell you, <laughs> nothing smells like a homegrown tomato. So I've uh, gone ahead and cut those. You see, I've got lots of juice. I did sprinkle a little salt on so it could be, so it would make that juice because remember we're stewing this and we're not adding any other kind of liquid to this. I mean, you could add a little water if you see it getting too tight, too dry. I'm gonna have all of these, aren't they lovely colors? Um, and you'll probably get other things like Cherokees, have lots of different lumps and bumps on them. Uh, you want to cut off any splits, any uh, scars in the skin like this right here. And to core them, all you do is you go in and you make a little divot or a chevron and you just cut if you have them. That way you don't have to sit there with a paring knife and go around and be cutting toward yourself and your own fingers. I find this to be much safer just taking out the core like that. And I'm also gonna get those little scars. Those are openings and bacteria can get in there. So we wanna cut that part out. And these beautiful yellows. And then on your tomatoes, you can do really big chunk. I'm not gonna take the skins off of these. I'm just gonna make really big slices because these will cook down and they'll break down as they cook. You can cut them as small as you want to, but on ratatouille, this is like I said, simple dish, easy to repeat. Don't worry about what everything looks like. I may even go two at a time. Here we go. And we get really efficient then. That is yeah. some fancy cutting. I mean, I know we do a lot of nice skills around here, but two tomatoes at a time. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Tuesday night? What are we? What are we Tuesday doing? night. We're trying to, yes, Lily, we're trying to get supper on. <laughs> now. What we're gonna do, and I will have to swing you around from facing me to facing our um, pot over here. I'm gonna get, I have a Dutch oven here. Uh, that's more for aesthetics as it is for anything else. And I'm gonna just see if I can get you close enough. I'll have to stack up my books so I can get you in where you can see. Now, all right, so I've got my Dutch oven on. You could use a very deep saucepan. Actually, I'm gonna move my beans out of the way and we'll get our saute pan ready too. Right here, I have some really small red Russian kale. I'm just gonna uh, throw it in like it is. If you see any big stems, you could just take the stem off very quickly, but this is all really small. So I'm just gonna leave it like it is when I saute it. Once my pan gets good and hot, I'm gonna pour in some olive oil. Now I'm putting in quite a bit here because I have a lot of veggies to saute. And with a stew like this, your olive oil becomes part of your sauce. We're gonna start with the aromatics first. So that would be our onions and our peppers. Peppers, go in with the onions. I'm going to make sure I get all of that in. Go in with the peppers. These are your watery vegetables. We put them in first because we want to get all that water out of there. Also, aromatics are great to start with. Um, they are the start of just about every dish that I make. And we're going to start sauteing that. And I'm moving it around a lot because saute does mean to jump. And what I want here is just for these to give off some of their water so that the sugars start concentrating and to turn, for the onions at least, to turn translucent. I'm gonna give you a little peek here. And then we'll do that about five to six minutes. That's about how long it takes. You're on medium high heat here. And then I'm gonna add the garlic. We go in with the garlic second because it's cut smaller and because it's full of a lot of oils and we don't want that to burn. Now the garlic just needs to saute for about a minute. While that happens, 
keep my feet up really high. While that happens, I'm going to grab my zucchini and my eggplant. As you can see, maybe the eggplant has started to brown a little bit just in a few minutes since I cut it before. I'm gonna go in with all of these zucchini. And really I have some guesstimated <laughs> amounts on your recipe, but just eye it. And if you're wanting to use up zucchini, maybe you use two really large zucchini. And it's a zucchini-esque ratatouille. Little bit of salt just to start to season the dish now. Always layering in seasoning. I leave pepper to the last because I don't want that taste to permeate the dish. I just want it to enhance. And now that that uh, zucchini is going, you might let it saute by itself just a little bit again so it will release water, start to uh, caramelize a bit. But I'm going to go ahead, since this is browning so quickly, I'm going to pull you up here and give you a bird's eye view. Look at all of this. Once I keep stirring it, so this is why I use the Dutch ovens because I usually, I start small and then I say, oh, let me just throw everything in. I do that with just about everything and then it becomes a huge dish. But you want to make this dish in large, large amounts. And we'll talk about why in just a moment. So you're gonna saute all that for a few minutes more typically, but I'm gonna get you through this recipe very quick. Now we're gonna take all these, I still can't get over how great these tomatoes smell. Uh, we're gonna pour in the tomatoes juice and all. So if you're chopping up your tomatoes, be sure to save your juice from your cutting board. Don't let all that run off. And I'm gonna leave this up just for a minute. We wanna bring this up to a boil and then turn it down. And that is the, those are the <coughs> basics right there of ratatouille. I'm going to bring you back here and we'll go back to a uh, portrait format. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to let that come up to a boil, turn it down and let it simmer. Um, you could let it simmer for about 20, 30 minutes and then serve in um, this recipe. You could use it either way. You could use it kind of loose and, saucy or you could use it um, really tight either way. I've got three different kinds of grains tonight and these are on the recipe that we're sharing with you and Katie has that recipe as well. So I've got um, some wheat berries here. I've got some red quinoa here and I've got some brown rice here. So all of these are whole grains so that you get all the benefits of the additional vitamins and minerals, the fiber, um, just all the things that are good for you. Now, don't shy away from these just because they're healthy. What I love about these are the different textures, and that's why I like to mix grains. In fact, with all of this, um, with these different kind of bowls, you can make grain bowls throughout the growing season and just sub in different kind of vegetables as they're available. Use different kind of grains. Use grits or polenta if you want to. I think some of you will receive some cornmeal, if not some grits. Um, Make that your base instead of grains, however you wanna do that. And then you can um, just saute or stew or roast your vegetables how you want. Add some protein, add a sauce, and you're ready to go. This is stuff you can bulk prep. And that's why I advocate making a huge pot of ratatouille because you can use that with this. You can use it as a side and we'll talk about some other uses in a moment. But I am going to uh, make a vinaigrette our Italian vinaigrette before we mix all of this together. And when we get close to the end of the ratatouille, I am also going to saute up that kale. So we, I wanted to show you these. There are different cooking methods. I'm getting ahead of myself, let's back up. There are different cooking methods for each of these grains. And I didn't wanna take time to show you each and every one tonight. If you have, or if you know someone who has a joy of cooking, most of the newer editions have a grain chart on them and it's wonderful. I have even stolen a grain chart from a poor edition of Joy of Cooking that was about to go to recycling because even though it had been duct taped, it wasn't staying together anymore. So I actually yanked that out and kept it 
it has the ratio, it has the cooking method, it has the cooking, the approximate cooking time for every kind of grain you want to use. So uh, either dig out your old food Bible, the joy of cooking, or find someone who has one and copy their, um, or take a photo of their grain chart, because this is great. All of these require different things like the uh, wheat and the rye berries and like whole spelt, things like that. They have to be soaked before they're cooked like beans. Uh, quinoa is really quick. Rice uh, doesn't take very long, about 20, 25 minutes. Brown rice takes about 40, 45 minutes. So you'll need to know all of those things before you get into your grain cooking. Uh, I teach a lot of grain cooking here to the students because I think it's, found, it's a foundational skill. I also teach a lot of vinaigrette making because vinaigrette can be a way to dress your salad or your multi-grain salad, but it can also be a marinade. It can be a sauce. It can be a way to impart some tanginess and some unctuousness to dishes you might not think of. You could put it over fish, you could put it over roasted or grilled veggies, and it's just got a ton of uses. And it's easy to make. And the fresh ones taste so much better than the ones that you're gonna find on shelf. I have an old pint jar here. We always reuse a, a lot of our jars around here. And I'm just gonna put everything into this jar. Now I have one clove of garlic and I smashed that with my knife and a little salt and did that mincing thing like we did earlier, only I just kept going and that made a little bit of garlic paste. I'm gonna put the garlic paste and my vinegar, this is Madhouse, made in Cincinnati. This is their apple cider vinegar. You could use a white wine or anything you have on hand, really. A white balsamic might be nice. I'm also gonna add a little bit more acid in this lemon. We're gonna cut that in half. I only need about a teaspoon, so I'm not gonna go directly into the jar because I might get ahead of myself and squeeze too much. So I'm going to just squeeze out a little bit here to keep myself on track and not have too much lemon. I do love an Italian vinaigrette, but some of the ones on the shelf can be too viscous. I'm gonna give my ratatouille a stir. Why are they like that, Tanya? Why is that like? I blame so less of them. <laughs> like I've sour sauce from your egg rolls with a salad dressing. With lots of garlic and crushed red pepper, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's and it's overly acidic and sweet, mm -hmm. and it's just goopy. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I don't like it. And um, I think, yeah, I blame xanthan gum, soy lecithin, all of those shelf stabilizers, thickeners, those chemical thickeners. Um, so yeah, I <laughs> I love making my own, and this is so simple. Yeah. I've got a couple of tablespoons of water just to tone down that acidity that we're the over acidity and then i've got a couple of tablespoons of honey this is a uh, local bourbon barrel honey which we love in this kitchen this will be just a little bit different taste because it's got it's aged in bourbon, bar bourbon barrels but it'll be our own um and then i've got a mixture here this is about one teaspoon of dried parsley one half teaspoon dried thyme one half teaspoon dried basil and just a pinch of oregano I love oregano, but you have to be careful about it. That piney, minty taste is wonderful when you get it just right, but when you get too much, it can almost taste metallic. So be very careful with fresh or especially with dried. So I've mixed all that together, that's going in. I have just a tiny bit of crushed red pepper. We're gonna add uh, about a teaspoon, of, or half, sorry, half a teaspoon of salt and a pinch of black pepper. I can't get my temperature right on my ratatouille. It is really going just a pinch, and then you see, now kids can help you do this while you're cooking the ratatouille. Um, they can make the dressing and you just shake it. Just make sure they've got the lid on tight and maybe that they use two hands and they can do their little salad dressing dance while they do it. And that gives them something to do and there you go. Wonderful, quick little emulsion. I did have some tasting spoons right there but I don't see them now. So I'll just use a measuring spoon. Just wanna make sure I've got my seasoning right. Oh, that's delicious. <laughs> that bourbon honey really does give it a different dimension. That's, that's marvelous. Okay, have to remember that one. Maybe you'll wanna write that down in your recipe is to use the bourbon honey. All right, so that's our vinaigrette. 
I'm going to start putting about a cup of each of these uh, grains into my big bowl that I've got back here. I've got my measuring cup. So I've got a cup of the quinoa. This is a red quinoa, and I did that mostly for the color difference. There's not a texture difference in red or white quinoa. Here's where you get the texture difference. I absolutely, I know it's a little bit of more effort to have to soak your grains and then you cook them and it takes a long cooking time. But rye and wheat berries just have a wonderful chew that other grains don't have and they have a nuttiness that's really nice. Uh, and then the brown rice. We've got here a cup of that. So a cup cooked, make sure that's cooked or you will end up with a gigantic salad. Now, so there's all our grains. If you wanted to, I put an option in your recipe for using fresh greens like spinach or if you have little salad greens, put those in now. You're going to do a little bit of salt and pepper for seasoning. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and dress the grains a little bit. Now, I just put about half that in. We don't want to overdress everything. Remember, we're going to put this saucy stew on top. You could also roast these vegetables and toss them in and make kind of a deconstructed ratatouille. Oh, that looks and smells marvelous. Let me give it a little taste. Just needs a little bit more salt. Okay. Let's go check on the ratatouille and we're going to saute those kale leaves. All right, we are cooking with gas over here. See that it's lovely. It's got all of the yellows and oranges and reds and greens and purples. It's a beautiful color. This is really loose right now, but like I said, that is fine for what for our purposes. I'm going to do a little bit of salt. and some pepper. And basically what we're looking for is for our vegetables to get tender. You, I can already tell just by pressing the eggplant, it is really starting to get there. My tomatoes have broken down. And probably the last thing to go <laughs> will be your squash and zucchini, but that's good because sometimes you can overcook squash and zucchini and you don't want that mushiness. Okay, so our pan back here is hot. See if I need to, if I can turn you just a little bit. And I'm gonna put just enough olive oil in the bottom to coat it. And I'm gonna use my hot pads because that handle might already be hot because of the ratatouille. And we're gonna let that, you can see when the oil gets hot because it's gonna shimmer like a mirage on a hot day. Make sure your bottom is coated. And we're not gonna use too much of the kale, just enough to stir into this size salad. It will cook way down. That is the one proviso I have. Tina, so that's just baby kale that maybe you got in a bag and you're tossing you cleaned it or just toss it in, you'd have to do stemming or chopping or? I, not when it's this small, I don't. Nice. It's very tender. The stems don't extend too far from the leaf. And I did wash it. Um, and then I leave a little bit of the water on it so that that helps to steam it as it cooks. Um, and that's, so that's a, a really yes, simple way. To get these little pro tips from Chef T. <laughs> Uh, and I'm not adding garlic or onions to this like I normally would. When I saute kale, I almost always use garlic, but we have lots of garlic in the ratatouille and in the dressing. So I thought I'd leave the kale nice and plain tonight. You can do this with any kind of green, really. Uh, chard, mustard, um, spinach itself. You could you could cook your spinach if you didn't want it more lettuce-y, if you wanted it more entree, cooking green-like. All right, I just want to wilt these a little bit more. Another little sprinkle of salt and now a pinch of pepper at the end. Okay. 
And you see the color. Yeah, you can barely see it. <laughs> but the color is really starting to pop on that. And the leaves are starting to wilt. I started with a huge bowl. And this is about all I've got. So it does wilt down. So if you are uh, inundated with kale as well, that would be a good place to start. Now, I'm going to turn the ratatouille off. I'm going to bring you back around here so we can start assembling the entire, whoops, I'm going the wrong way. Here we go. Yes, so uh, this is about the amount of greens I have, three cups plus the dressing. And I'm gonna grab my spoon back here. I'm gonna go ahead and toss the hot greens with the grains. Greens and grains are good just by themselves. I'm bringing the grains over. I'm going to toss those in. Smell uh, really nutty and um, herbaceous. Now, if your um, greens are really big, the ones that you're receiving, if they are really large, then uh, just strip them off the stem. And like Lily was questioning, just chop them up a little bit. Um, it's easiest to do it before you cook, but if you forget that step, I've, which I've done, <laughs> you can just as easily chop them up afterwards. And that lets you see if there's excess liquid in your grains too. Here's, here's um, what I'm in my head started calling fine cooking. <laughs> <laughs> um, sometimes I don't chop things up enough and then I come in with the kitchen shears into the pot. And just, oh, yes. <laughs> just like, no, too big, fix it, it's fine. <laughs> Okay, um, I have of I have a lot of additional stuff you can add. So I tonight of that list of additional stuff, I have some chopped up mozzarella just from from fresh bought mozzarella, uh, the ball the larger balls. Uh, if you have the little tiny ones, the little cherry ones, cerinola, uh, toss them in whole. I've got some capers here. You could use some Mediterranean style olives. I've got some parm. I didn't put the, your recipe for your uh, Italian dressing calls for parm, but it, I'm putting it in, so I didn't put it in the um, dressing. And, uh, oh, I've got the beans <laughs> and some toasted pine nuts, which I, I forgot to add into the list, but you can make a note of that. And I've got the beans. So we're going to just start adding different things. And you'll want to taste this as you add because, like, this won't add too much salt. Mott's, fresh Mott's doesn't have too much salt, but the capers and the Parmesan, they all do. I'm putting tons of capers in here. A lot of times I'll put capers and olives in my ratatouille because you're looking at a lot of sweet vegetables and that brininess is great to add without just dumping a bunch of salt in there. And it's a wonderful flavor. Lily and I are both huge fans of capers. So we're gonna toss in quite a few of those. A little bit of Parm now and a few of those pine nuts now. That crunchiness, uh, any kind of nut with a grain ball, if you tolerate nuts well, um, is marvelous. Now I've already seasoned my beans, so I don't have to taste those. These I just cooked down, like I said, with a little garlic, a little onion. Pardon. Pepper got to me. Not to mention a lot of seasonal allergies, which is difficult to navigate this time of year. All right, if you had some cooked chicken or some sliced Italian sausage or something else you want to put in, if you wanted to add some animal protein, that would be great. And I'm just sort of eyeing this and I'm going, yeah, that looks about right. Uh, and now I'm going to move the ratatouille close here so I can carefully spoon some in here. This is Mark. Now my ratatouille is not red red, it's, it's kind of orange because I had all of the yellow and uh, orange tomatoes. And all I'm gonna do folks, you can let it cool if you want, but since I cooked my greens, I'm not worried about them wilting anymore. Oh my goodness, the smell is just amazing. And I'm gonna start with that. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. What's great about grain, multi-grain salads is that they can be served warm like this right off the stove if you're in a hurry, trying to get everybody fed and homework done and baths and bed and all of that. Or you can let it cool. Or you can let it cook down a little bit more. And we'll talk about those uses in just a minute. If anybody has any questions about using up other veg, let me know. But here's, here's our base. And you wanna give that a taste and make sure that you've seasoned it well. Um, these are great if your kids are picky. It's great for introducing things. You can kind of get them used to something they like and introduce new things, get them to help cook, get them to choose. Maybe say, well, would you like to add broccoli or zucchini tonight to your grain bowl? Um, you can omit things that uh, for food avoidances and things like that. Um, and you could even make it a bar. So you start with the grains and everybody just makes up their own individual bowl. We teach that a lot here in the classes. So I'm gonna plate this up, well, bowl it up, I should say. Put it in a decent bowl. Oh, before I do that, um, some of my garnish is fresh basil. And I grow the fresh basil. Um, and some fresh parsley, which I did have to purchase. I've kind of been hard on my parsley plant this summer and it didn't have a lot more. To, I need to give it time to rest. It didn't have a lot more to give. So uh, you just pull the leaves off the stems. And if you're a stock maker, you wanna save those parsley stems and then pull the kind of twist off the florets and the big leaves from the basil stems. And if you are chopping big kale leaves, you would do it the same way. So you strip the leaf off the stem, you make a stack, you roll it like a little burrito. We're gonna do the same thing with the parsley. You take your knife, use a tiny little claw. Please don't put your pinky down. It's hard, it's hard not to when you're holding something this small, but be careful. And you're gonna make really thin, less than eighth of an inch, maybe like 16th of an inch or smaller cuts. And use your knuckles as a guide. Don't stick your thumb down there either. Be very careful when you do this. This is a cut called chiffonade. If you like knowing your different knife cuts, it's just little ribbons and it's a beautiful garnishing cut uh, because you get all of this. If these were drier, it'd be fluffier. And I'm going to chop up a little fresh parsley. Now you can use fresh herbs in your vinaigrette too. Um, I would use that up within three days if you use the fresh herbs rather than a, maybe a five or so for uh, dried. You don't want that garlic sitting around too long. That is one disadvantage of not using the, sh the preserved shelf um, salad dressings. Okay, so now I can get out my nice square bowl and put my salad in there. Now, ratatouille is great as a sauce. You can, it's wonderful as a sauce on whitefish or with some shrimp, just saute some shrimp and throw in. Uh, if you cook it a little thick, you can uh, put it on a pizza. It's one of my favorite ways to make pizza. So take a thick ratatouille and throw it on top and then some fresh mozzarella and then you can go in the oven. I use a lot of the Weizenberger pizza crust mix because it is so easy. Not that throwing a pizza crust together is not easy, but let me tell you, just adding water and mixing and letting it sit for a few minutes, that's super easy, especially when you're trying to get dinner together quickly. Now I'm gonna, so pile that up in there, a little bit more parm, a few more pine nuts. That's why I always reserve anything I put in a salad, I always reserve a little bit to put on top. And then of course, all of that lovely fresh herbage, our basil and our uh, parsley. And then enjoy. So that is your high summer multigrain salad. Tanya, we are suffering on this end. Of <laughs> that looks amazing. I can only imagine how it smells. It smells really good. I'm making these students 
out here probably very jealous. <laughs> the door locks. They've been banging on it. Yeah, I've got my sign up. Like, please do not disturb. But they're like, oh my gosh, it smells so good. We, um, if you, we put the recipes in the chat. I'm sure we can figure out a way to pin those somewhere else. We've got our very competent students in the background that are much more savvy than me. Um, you can always go to our Food Connection website to see past recipes. I was thinking, Tanya, that that ratatouille on top of the focaccia Brian made uh, maybe a month Let's ago. See. Yes, like a huge open face sandwich. Knife. I love knife and fork sandwiches, you know? So. <laughs> I don't know if it counts to call it a sandwich still if you're eating with a knife and fork, but it feels like it. I love that, though. <laughs> yes, yeah. that would be one wonderful. Um, also, they might want to check out Ford Waterstrap, who is one of our farmers in the Kentucky Farm Share Coalition. Uh, check out the demo from that day because we used up a lot of um, zucchini, squash, and tomatoes on that day if they're looking for more ideas. Um, so check, out a, archive, yeah. check out our recipe archives. Lots of ideas. Let's bring Katie back in here yep. briefly. Are you suffering too, Kate? Oh, I need yeah. you. There you go. <laughs> yes, I, my like mouth is watering. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> it, it's wonderful. And um, Chef Jenny, I was just wondering, I mean, this is like so delicious and so good. Like it looks great. And I know folks will be getting a lot of kale and like the fall shares. Like mm -hmm. what do you say your go-tos are for like the fall veg? Like what do you love in a grain salad besides kale? Um. Yes. For, so in a grain salad, yes, kale, if you have a uh, butternut, acorn, kabocha, all of those fall and winter type squashes, roast those up, maybe even glaze them with a little local honey, toss those in, lots of uh, roasted red onion, parsnips, all of those fall vegetables just are yeah. great for each other. And then instead of an Italian vinaigrette, I would probably use like a, an apple cider vinaigrette, which is mm -hmm. not just apple cider vinegar, but I also reduce a little apple, fresh apple cider. So it's got that sweet tanginess and it goes with all those fall vegetables. And then some local pumpkin seeds toasted up on top. Uh, some uh, ground pork, local pork sausage would be a great addition to that. That's yeah. Like we, we, we do that a lot <laughs> with the students. Okay. Again, it's, this is one of those recipes you could make year round. Uh, in the spring, you could start with peas and green garlic and um, little leafy lettuces and keep it light and do a champagne vinaigrette, you know, maybe some garbanzos. You can like change it up with the season. So it's, it's a great recipe. It's a foundational recipe that you can then build on. Perfect. That sounds wonderful. And it definitely sounds like a great way to use up all of the winter squash and like great fall veg and just kind of also being able to think about switching up the dressing. Like, you know, I, my brain is always like, Oh, I'll use the same dressing, but like, you know, kind of varying it with the produce you use too, which sounds great. Yes. So yes. I hope, um, yeah. If anyone's watching that's participating in our um, Kentucky farm share program, lots of great ideas, check out um, more of their resources and, um, Lillian, you're, you're going to share other resources too that you all have, but lots of great recipes. So thank you all so much. Thanks, Katie. Yeah. Thank you, Katie. So, um, go to the Kentucky Farm Share page, check it out. They've got some awesome resources from farmers, some really gorgeous um, downloadable social media cards. Keep an eye out for us. We're about to do a big announcement about our, uh, we've had a CSA resource hub up for farmers here, but we're going to do a big announcement on it coming up. Videos, recipes, anyone can use it. So that'll be fun. And Kay, I will say farewell and good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, and thank I'll you so much for having me. Yeah. And then Tanya, Les, yep. do we have anything coming up we need to let people know about? We are done with our Monday live streams. If you missed yes. it, you missed it, but go back and watch them. They're still fresh and delicious. But we are planning lots with our students and with some local chefs. We are not stopping with live demos with the guest chefs. So um, people need to follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We are at UK Food Connect. Uh, if you like the Facebook, uh, it, it, or if you get notifications, if you set yourself up for notifications, you will, anything that we, we always put an event on Facebook and that's an easy way to find out what's going on. Uh, and uh, sometimes we'll put them 
uh, up pretty far out, but you also may want to check. Fridays are a good posting day <laughs> um, because we like to give you a little bit of time before the next week to think about it. So, yeah, we do a lot of posting on Fridays for what's coming up in the week. So you may want to uh, give us a follow. Uh, if you make any of our recipes and want to share that with us, please do that. Just tag us at UK Food Connect. Uh, and we'd love to see what you're cooking up with your farm shares, with what you're finding at the farmer's markets. And right now, it, you could trip and fall on fresh produce. <laughs> so we'd love to see what you're cooking up. Please do. We love making each other jealous with our food. It's a great <laughs> tradition among people who love to cook. I'm sure my mother and I uh, send pictures back and forth and make each other jealous. So. Tanya, thank you. You know where I live. So if you are feeling overburdened by that, come on up to the north side. <laughs> <laughs> um, turn on notifications. Thanks to everyone. Thanks to Kentucky Farm Share Coalition. If you see a farmer, don't hug them because we, we can't hug right now, but send them send them an energetic hug because they're, they're, five, high five. they're in the weeds metaphorically and literally at this time of the season. So give them a shout out um, and please stay healthy and happy and um, we'll see you all next time. We'll see you when we see you.